Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode Season 2. As you can see behind me, a few things have changed and the base is slightly different now. And all of this happened during the weekend and on Friday in some live streams that I do on twitch.tv slash Breaker. So you should go check that out. The link is in the description. You should go follow me there so you get notified. And let's begin today's episode. So as you can see now, the entrance to the base is slightly higher because I was working on the base yesterday in the stream and what kind of bothered me is that I built a power room that is rendered right underneath there. We're going to go check that out in a moment. Uh, I was building that in the last episode. We were starting to put in the thermoelectric generators to start producing power. And what I had the problem with that the layer here didn't allow me to, or if I had the floor here, it didn't allow me to have some sort of like basement in or mid floor in between the top floor and the floor below, which is this floor, uh, to run cabling. So what I decided to do is just uh, raise the or raise the layer up by a couple layers or raise the floor up by a couple layers. So the staircase goes down a little bit further now, uh, and we arrive up to here where I have changed some of the middle blocks to chisel stone. Uh, from uh, chisel actually it's a seamless double slab you can chisel that uh, with just regular smooth stone so you can see like so just regular stone turns into the seamless double slab which is really nice uh, so I have that in the middle and it's kind of breaking up a little bit of the Jasper and giving us a little bit of a nice texture in the middle which I really really like uh, and I built this uh, on the stream so again as I said twitch.tv slash breaker go check it out over there we do some cool stuff uh, so we have this built uh, and it's looking really, really cool. And because I raised the ceiling up by quite a bit, I couldn't have the um, the floor above be proper. If I had this ceiling only three tall, then we wouldn't have a problem. But because I raised it up to make it look better, uh, we kind of ran into problems and hence raising everything up. So I think uh, what I might do, uh, since we have a whole bunch of space here, uh, I don't want to just cram everything into, let's say, a 3x3 three three of chunks, kind of like I did in the uh, in the previous season. So if we look here, uh, this is where we have currently the base, kind of, or at least this part is going to be one one place. So we can bring it in through these chunks and then have like a 3x3 three three of chunks, maybe this or something in that sense. And then we can also build stuff, for example, go over here and build stuff in this area. And we can even build stuff over our old base once we get that removed, If when we get actual proper storage and everything uh, going. So what I might do is keep this part of the base as like power and maybe storage, or maybe just power. I'm not sure yet. But I think power and storage would fit nicely together. And then we can hook everything else up with uh, applied logistics or wireless connectors or anything. How rude you interrupt me. Okay. So basically, we can have another thing, let's say over here going in and we can have, let's say resource production or processing of stuff, we can have that going over there. And then over here, we can have something else. And I think uh, we'll work on this last and maybe put in uh, either a mob farm or something, we can go above our old base and build it in there in that spot, because we can have it on the same layer as that and then kind of intertwine it with some sort of pathway going back and forth that I think could be neat. Uh, so yeah, so the plan for today is to get into some Batania, just so we unlock the Ex Nihilo quest, uh, quest gate, uh, so we can start getting into that. And we can start actually using sieves to produce us materials because I hate having to run down into the mine getting stuff to get copper, I have to mine up higher and so forth. So I want to just get sieves going right off the bat. We have quite a bit of power production now I think like 3000 3. 4,000, it's 1.7 times two. Uh, so uh, we have quite a bit of that going for us. And we can just set up like a temporary setup of sieves, uh, maybe down there, or maybe we just do one sort of setup like right up here. Um, like right above here. Because until I get to power cells, I can't really transfer the power uh, wirelessly to places. So having uh, sieves like right up here as a temporary setup might be fine. And we can just do a simple slower sieve setup with a simple ore processor and just store it in some drawers uh, that I think could be cool. Uh, and then we can actually put it in a proper spot with proper automation at a different point in time. Uh, so yeah, that is kind of the plan. So let us get started.
So to get you started, you need to find some mystical white petals and then you take those and you put them in a crafting recipe like this in the luminous crafting table and you should be able to make a petal apothecary. No idea. I might have to wait for it to be nighttime, which it is going to be soon and then we might have a bit more uh, star power or starlight starlight. Oh, now we can do it. Ah, so I just had to remove the blocks above. <laughs> okay, sure thing. Okay, we needed starlight. And there we go. We have ourselves a petal apothecary, which unlocks the gate for Britannia and gets us a flower pouch. Do you have any flowers inside? You do not. Okay. And we're going to plant down these. You can see there's a little shimmer on the floor. And then you take some bone meal and bone meal that shimmer and you get two tall flowers. You can then just vein mine it and basically you quadruple your flower. So we turned five into 20. And we can then just repeat the same process over and over again until we get a bunch of petals. So I will do that for a little bit. So then the next thing you have to make is a pestle and mortar, which is just a bowl, a spruce or a regular plank and a stick. And then you take that and your mystical petals and you turn them into powder. And we're just going to make four stacks of this right now. And then you turn that into some mystical floral fertilizer. And then the floral fertilizer, you can just right click on the floor and you will get flowers. Uh, and if you have the flower pouch in your inventory, the flowers will go directly into your inventory uh, or directly into the flower pouch, I should say. Uh, and you can just go around, plant this down and it will spawn in a bunch of flowers. And you can just go ham with the entire thing and never worry about flowers ever again. Really, kind of. So I just wanted to do enough Botania to unlock the gate because we already have 12 mana steel, which is going to be enough for three sieves. So we're going to come in here and we have all of this carbon, right? Um, okay, so I'm going to empty this out. I'm going to toss in a bunch more iron. Uh, I'll actually just toss in this enriched iron like so to get that processed into steel. And we're going to just use up all of this compressed carbon that we have in here uh, and get that processing. And when I'm ready, I can then put in some diamonds or even compressed diamond, which I have right here. Uh, and we can turn the mana steel into some mana infused steel or infused ingot. And we can then turn that into mana infused gears, which we're going to get three total. And we can make three total sieves and we can use one uh, or two of them with the diamond meshes. We're going to make dust into redstone and all of the other resources and certus quartz. And then we're going to turn gravel into diamonds and emeralds and black quartz and all of the other resources. And then we're also going to take flint stiffened mesh and we're gonna process gravel in there so we can get ourselves some coal and flint as well. Also lapis, that'll be really nice. And eventually we're gonna process the netherrack as well and we're gonna process soul sand possibly for nether quartz, maybe we'll do it some other way, maybe endstone for uranium, stuff like that, but that's gonna be for the future once we get more into Batania and make, can make more mana steel. Now that we have made the 12 mana infused, we can get it smelted down in the smeltery over here. Uh, that shouldn't take too, too long if we speed it up a tiny bit and then we can get it poured into gears. We are also going to need some nickel plates for the sieves and I don't know if I have those already made. I have Constantin, I believe I don't have nickel. So let's grab, uh, we're going to need two, four, six total. And I think it's one ingot per plate in the smeltery. So I think we should be good if we toss those in there and then we can just get everything poured out. And we also need the enriched alloy, which I think we should have, and then just some wood. And we can get started on that. Uh, so that's the last gear. Let us grab a little bit of uh, wood and sticks. So wood, like so. Let's make a stack of sticks, or half a stack of sticks. Oh, that makes a stack. Okay. Uh, we can then pour out the plates, which we're just going to do automatically, because uh, it's going to be easier. So we can grab those. Now wait for the plates. In the meantime, I can grab ourselves the enriched alloy, which I have right there. The plates should hopefully be close to uh, done. Okay. Uh, and we are going to get a choice reward for one of the um, for one of the meshes. So if we go here uh, and we can do uses, sieve there, bam. Okay. Should have the plates ready. There we go. We can get another one of these going. So recipe like so, three sieves, that should complete us a quest. There we go. And we get a choice or do we get all of those? Oh, we get all of those. Nice. Okay. So we can just upgrade the iron one to another diamond because we need two diamond and the flint. So we're just going to grab another six diamonds. Let's grab 
seven blocks like so and we can then take this plus six diamonds and make it into the second diamond mesh we can also get these guys enchanted if we wanted to in the beginning uh, I don't really know if it's necessary, but do we have the enchanting table still set up outside? We do. Uh, I don't really have lapis on me. We have lapis in here. Okay, so we can get CV efficiency 3 on this one. Can we get anything different on that one? No. Okay, uh, so I think I would need to reset some enchanting levels. Plus, I have 7 levels right now, and we did make a thing in between episodes or in the stream, I think. And that is the Tome of Knowledge, which can store XP or uh, give you XP. So pretty much uh, I can just all, all the time have XP stored. And if we need to teleport somewhere, I can just grab that. Uh, so I don't think we'll go uh, and enchant these right now. I don't think it's really necessary. But I will turn them into uh, auto sieves. Uh, auto sieves. Uh, there we go. We can do auto heavy or auto regular. I think I'll just do regular. So it's glass paints, iron and iron blocks of iron. So that is isn't that difficult. We'll just grab a stack of that, a stack of that. We should have glass panes somewhere, probably in here. We have six of these, and then we'll just grab some glass and craft up some more, like so. And then we can turn those into three auto sieves. Nice. It didn't even use the 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 green paints that's fine uh nope this chest there we go we can get rid of that lovely so now we need some sort of automated way of producing cobblestone which is going to be this guy uh and then we need to turn the cobblestone into the um corresponding components that we need so we're going to place this back and we need to turn it with either i think a manufactory will work that, that's a basic recipe, yeah. The manufactory is basically kind of like a pulverizer. So it can turn, I believe, gravel turns to flint. And what does cobblestone turn into? So here cobblestone turns to sand. And we can't really get gravel this way. Okay, so we are going to need, we can get into probably, uh, hold on, the, what's called, the factory? Uh, isn't it the factory? Material stone factory. So that requires a machine case, which is the advanced machine case. Yeah, that's a bit farther away. I mean, we could just make everything we need for these, because we can make steel plates, we can make carbon, we just need to make the manufactory and get it pulverized. Uh, and then we need to make the advanced alloy, which is just mixed metal ingots, which we have made before to, in the uh, in the compressor to make that. Then we need the basic machine case, which we can make and then that can turn with some rubber and some reinforced stone into the the machine case from Tesla core and we can then make a material stone rock factory and we would need three of those. I think it's a good point if we go into that right now. We are also going to need pink slime, which we only need to get one of and that's going to be the mob slaughter factory, I believe, or uh, is it the mob? I think it's the mob slaughter factory, yeah. Uh, so that is going to be another one of these machine cases, so we can just get uh, get that going for us. Whilst making the manufactory, we unlocked this and we get a choice reward of loot crates or advanced platings. The advanced platings uh, are gonna get us uh, access to either the pressurizer, which is kind of nice, but to make the advanced plating, we just need tough alloy and a basic plating, which is a whole bunch of lead and some graphite and tough alloy, which we now can make because we found uh, in between episodes here, I found one of those clusters of Thorium, magnesium, lithium, and I think there's also boron. Yeah, uh, so we can make that if we if we really need to. Uh, we can toss another stack in here in the manufactory, but I think I'll just take the loot chest uh, for the moment. I mean, no, we'll take the advanced platings. Uh, they'll they'll just just be nicer, I think. Okay, and we have also some more quests to collect, I believe, while we wait for that. Uh, to process here we have uh, we've made mechanism steel so we've made the enriched iron the steel blend and the steel ingots we can claim a loot chest and here we can claim a basic tier installer quest and we can grab ourselves some green stained glass and some barbecue platters which are gonna be nice food okay sweet uh, do we have any more quests to claim Batania maybe if we accept this uh, we get 16 floral fertilizer out of that well rip okay we can claim the Petal Apothecary, and then we didn't do anything else, really. Yeah, okay, that's fine. 
So we can grab then those and we can combine them into raw carbon fiber like so. And then we take the raw carbon fiber and combine it into carbon mesh and that gets us 16. Uh, lovely. So we can then come over to our compressor on this side. And we can toss these in, in and these will turn into carbon plates, which is one of the crafting uh, requirements for getting us the advanced machine casing. So we need some basic ones and we're going to need a total of four to, uh, for what we need. So we have four here uh, and we're going to need then the advanced styler, the carbon plates and the steel plates. Do we have enough steel plates made? Do I even have any steel plates made? Uh, it doesn't look like I do. So let's grab, uh, that's going to be four per. So let's just make half a stack. You know, we, we made a bunch of steel. It's smelted in the chests there or in the furnaces there. So we can just toss uh, all of these in here and let those go. We can even just give it a tiny bit of a speed boost and craft the rest of the stuff that we need. For making the mob slaughter factory, we are going to need some plastic. So let's just uh, get into that as well while we do some other stuff. So we're going to make the machine cases from Tesla Core. Actually, do advanced machine cases give me any sort of quest? Anything? No, no, I see two. I don't think so. So we're just going to turn those into this. And that should unlock industrial foregoing in the gates here. And here we can get an infinite water source, a latex processing unit, or another machine case. Uh, what's the recipe for the water source? That's just some buckets and some basic plating. Yeah, that's not worth taking. Uh, I'm going to take... I mean, I have everything prepared for the latex processing unit. So I'll just take another machine case, which is kind of the same, but, you know, it is fine. So we're going to take the latex processing unit. Like, did I get everything? I got everything. I didn't have to make the latex processing unit. I thought... I keep forgetting to read. Okay, so we need the tree fluid extractors. We get the latex processing unit. Uh, you know what we're going to do? Since I didn't know, uh, we're just going to delete this. And we're going to get a uh, machine frame, a uh, machine case from Tesla Core. Like that. That seems fair. I think that seems fair. Uh, we're going to grab some fluid conduits too. I'm just going to make a stack like so. Uh, we can toss the rest of this uh, in here. Wonderful. Uh, then we need to take our uh, ba -da -ba -da machine case, put it here. And we need to make uh, some pl some plastic for which we're going to go outside here and actually go, uh, as you can see, my machines are gone and the, the my, my previous power setup. So I moved everything in here. Uh, so we have nice access to to all the things that we need. So the tree fluid extractors do not require power. The only thing that requires power is the latex processing unit. So what we can do is, since this is kind of the floor, we're just going to set it up like here. Uh, that seems fine. So we're going to place these guys like so. Is this going to break into the bottom floor? It is. Um, and where did you... I had a... Oh, there's the stair. Okay. Um, okay, so here we have a little bit of space in, in, this, in this spot. No, stop placing blocks underneath where I want them to go. Okay, can I place this guy upwards? I can. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to grab these. I'm going to break the torch. We're going to place them up like so. Grab one of those. I can rotate them if uh, necessary. Do I? Can I rotate them with the configurator? Does that work? No. Uh, can I use the hammer? I can. Okay. So we're just going to rotate them twice like this. We're going to give the block placer a bit of rubber wood. So it's going to place that there. And this is going to start extracting fluid latex. And then we're going to take the latex processing unit. We're going to put it right here. Uh, we are going to need the infinite water source. So we're going to place that there. We're going to put a fluid conduit right here. Let's say extract always active, and that should fill this guy up with water. And then we're going to come up here. We're going to disable this extract, and we're going to go like so on all four. And we're just going to say extract always active on all of these. Like so, and that should start putting in fluid latex, and it's making us tiny dry rubbers, which we then craft into dry rubbers. And then we smelt the dry rubbers into plastic. <laughs> so... We're going to get that eventually. We can even probably just ex 
use a regular conduit and extract it directly into the energized smelter. If we get a chest put up on top of this guy, then we can get it automatically smelting. But for the moment, I think I'll just leave it be for a little bit uh, until I get enough plastic for what I need to make. Before we craft up our mob slaughter factory and get it set up, we are gonna need some mobs to slaughter. And it can be any sort of mob. We could get possibly some pigs and start uh, processing those and uh, getting them slaughtered. But I think an easier solution is if I just teleport back to the desert uh, and we go into the nether, I will find a nether fortress and go kill some wither skeletons with uh, my looting sword. And we can uh, get ourselves a drop of evil make a cursed earth spawner that we can just just a small box i don't know like a five by five which we can turn off with one redstone lamp and uh we can get that going for us and uh just kill those guys that i think sounds like a neat neater solution than doing a pig farm or something weird all right i got my drop of evil we have a small little five by five inside box and we're gonna turn that into cursed earth uh, we're not gonna turn off the lamp just yet. I have a basic redstone interface which is linked to that lamp so we can turn it on and off. Uh, and we need to grab that mob slaughter factory. And we're also gonna need to power it a little bit. And I don't need to run this for quite a while. So what we're just gonna do is, I believe in here I have the furnace generators and then here I have a bunch of this red coal uh, that we can just grab. And I think one furnace generator should be plenty for what we need because this farm is going to be slightly smaller. So let's place this guy down. The range should be a bit small. So let's get a range add-on. Uh, I don't know if I have enough plastic for this, but I, that's just too plastic. I think I should have uh, that. Did I toss it away? Plastic, a couple plastics. Let me craft one of the add-ons that we need. I'm pretty sure this one should cover the area. Uh, more than enough. Yeah, it's perfect size. Wonderful. So we can hide the working area. We're gonna toss in a furnace generator and just toss this guy on. We can also grab some speed upgrades. I'm tossing everything away. Speed upgrades. There we go. So that should charge everything up. We should have... Uh, this is ADRF per tech. This is gonna make 200 per tech. And this burns for quite a while, so we should be good. And if we turn this guy off, we should see mobs spawning in here. And this guy should take care of them uh, sooner rather than later. Mobs. There it goes. Okay, so it made liquid meat and pink slime. So I just have to let this go until we get one bucket of pink slime. And then we can use the same trick that we already used for uh, slime here to get just an infinite uh, amount of slime, which is using a compacting drawer. So to grab all the stuff out, we can just click here on the pink slime or the meat tank and we're gonna say the meat can only be extracted on the left and the pink slime can only be extracted on the right. And then we're gonna put a conduit here and here. And I have a couple portable tanks, which we're just gonna toss in like this and then say extract always active and extract always active. So we should clear out the meat and the pink slime and eventually we will get a bucket of pink slime. We're currently at like around 300 ish. Uh, millibuckets, so we're gonna have to wait on that and then what we're gonna do is use the compacting drawer trick by putting in some slime balls uh, or we're gonna put in one of the pink slime balls that we're gonna get and that's gonna make it so we can put in green slime blocks on the top and we can just make an infinite amount of pink slime pretty much all right so now that we have our pink slime we can just place this on the floor uh, and it should flow out and eventually spawn in a pink slime there it goes. I wanted to cut, but it didn't have to. Okay, so you can then get killed and drops us one pink slime. It's all we need, nothing else. And then we can come up here, toss it in here, and you can see that we have green slime blocks on top. Bam, bam, stack of pink slime. Now we can craft ourselves the material stonework factory and we can craft then another one. And for the last one, I'm gonna need to go grab one more water bucket out of our sink here, like so. And that should give us the last material stonework factory. Lovely. So I was just looking through our quests and we are pretty much at applied logistics. So I think before getting to any sort of resource automation, we can get a small but functional applied logistics system going. We can get some storage buses and hook them up to just some crates and possibly get a full on blown drawer, drawer system. We can craft up some more pistons, which is just compressed cobblestone, some plates and some treated wood. We have all of that and we can just craft that up. And I think what I will do is on today's stream, I will set up a full blown drawer system 
and maybe clean up some of the crates and also get that set up in the new part of the base because that is going to be power and storage. So we're going to set it up somewhere over there uh, and then we're going to come back tomorrow uh, in the next episode and we're going to craft ourselves the ME controller. I'm going to get everything ready that we need. Uh, we are going to need to get into a basic inscriber, which is just going to be all of this. We're going to make possibly some more machine cases in between episodes or possibly on the stream. Uh, we're going to get some fluix, which is going to be just some chart certus, nether quartz, and redstone. We have all of that, and that I think should be pretty cool. And then we can come back later and automate our sieves and all of that because we can get it functioning with the apply energistic system and get everything going that way. So with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.